Could you just say, uh, state your name and who you are? I'm Tom Jones, former uh, space shuttle astronaut and planetary scientist. And uh, you're here at the um, Boudoir Hazy Air and Space Museum today for what reason? <laughs> June 14th, yes. Uh, I'm here at the Air and Space Museum signing my books, Skywalking and Planetology and Hellhawks. And um, so is this a memoir? Is this a memoir? Or? Skywalking is my memoir of my four trips on the space shuttle. And uh, the last one to help build the International Space Station. So. The Skywalking title comes from my three spacewalks up on the Atlantis at the space station. But uh, if you really wanted the experience of what it's like to strap on a shuttle or put on a spacesuit and go for a spacewalk, that's what Skywalking is for. So you did an extra uh, extra vehicular fly, uh, walk, EVA, extra vehicular activity, spacewalking. I call it Skywalking in the book. So you're, um, when you do that, you don't have a tether or anything. Oh yes, you do. Yeah, you, you don't want to drift off away. And so. Uh, you wear about a 50-foot long steel tether that attaches you to the shuttle or the space station. Because uh, I've seen photographs of there was a EVA of um, of some kind of I, I don't know uh, some kind of device where they didn't have a tether. Well, that's true. Back in the 80s, they flew an astronaut maneuvering unit. It's called the uh, MMU, the Man Maneuvering Unit. It was a jetpack that was strapped onto the back of the suit, and they could free fly, uh, and they did disconnect their tethers for that. Now we have a on the current space suit model up on the space station, uh, you have a small jetpack on the back of your backpack just in case your tethers break. Because the space station weighs almost a million pounds and it can't fly after you to come and grab you. So the little jetpack is useful, but it's only for emergencies. Whereas back in the 80s, they actually used that device to actually go and grab satellites, for example. And um, which, which shuttle missions did you fly on? The numbers of those missions were STS-59 and 68 and 80 and 98. Uh, three shuttles, twice on Endeavour, Columbia, and then Atlantis. Um, now there's some controversy on STS-80 about a um, supposed uh, sighting of a UFO. Um, could you, uh, and I know that you wrote about it on your blog, I was wondering if you could just address yeah, that. Sure. Um, STS-80, Columbia, 17 and a half day mission. And uh, on every mission you see lots of debris that is released from the shuttle's payload bay or frozen propellant from the main engines or the thrusters that drifts along with you, in some cases for several days after you arrive in orbit. And so that little cloud of particles gets captured by the low light TV cameras on the uh, space shuttle that are used by the ground controllers at night. And when those wind up on video, and if you don't know the context for when those pictures were taken, those little particles might seem to you like distant stars or moving objects in space. And the video I've seen from STS-80 is just that. It's this low light TV camera capturing these ice particles in the very near field, only 10 or 20 feet away. And in the, in the camera view, they look like they're um, uh, flashing. In fact, they're just tumbling little ice flakes. Uh, those cameras, are they external cameras, or are they, in, are they, in, are they inside the um, space shuttle, or are they external? Yeah, there are four cameras, one at each corner of the payload bay. And typically, one or two of those would be those low-light, black-and-white cameras. And when the crew is asleep or working on something else, the ground controllers in Houston can point those remotely at anything they want. And they're typically just doing sightseeing, looking for thunderstorms at night and so forth. And that's why you get these views of the Earth's horizon. Uh, it's typically not the crew using those cameras, but um, the ground controllers. Are the, um, are the cameras, so are they, those are only um, being operated when the payload, payload bay is open, or? Yes, but the, the payload bay doors are open from the time you get to orbit till the time you're coming home. And there's, these are radiators on the inside of the doors that are responsible for thermal control on the shuttle, so they stay open all the time. Um, now, uh, there, there's been other astronauts who have had um, UFO sightings. Uh, Jim McDivitt, uh, um, John Glenn. Uh, what do you, what do you seen things that they can't explain, and they're, therefore, by definition, it's a UFO. It just, uh, but what it really is, is unknown. So um, some people think they're spaceships, I don't. Uh, but most of them, I think, under careful analysis, are explainable like the ones on STS-80. And I don't think I've, I've heard of anybody who has, a, uh, in the astronaut corps, who's ever seen anything that they thought was unexplained. Is there, um, is there any, question. okay, is there any sort of um, uh, 
reporting method for astronauts if they cite something that's that's um, an anom something anom anom anomalous, uh, something un unidentified. It can be handled just by the usual way you report any incident in flight. So you can radio it to the ground, or after the flight, you can uh, have in your post-flight debrief, you can talk to the flight controllers about it. So there was no special category of reporting for UFOs. It just didn't come up. Okay. Hey, one, just one quick question. Um, how, did, how did that footage become public, the um, STS-80 footage? Um, all of the footage during a mission typically would be beamed down live from the ship during the f course of the flight, and NASA would just play it on NASA TV. And then at the end of the day, there might be something called flight day highlights, where they roll up about 10 minutes of highlights and broadcast those as well. So as far as I know, on STS-80, that stuff was just publicly broadcast in real time and people picked up on some of these moving ice crystals in there and uh, pounced on that. And it's sort of been a, a, a legend on the internet ever since, but everybody on my crew agrees that they were just ice crystals. Okay, all right, thank you very much, Tom Jones, astronaut Tom Jones, appreciate it. Okay. Take care. Thanks. Enjoy